All right, everyone. Uh, everyone's favorite neocon, Lindsey Graham, is warmongering again. It's basically a yearly tradition for him. Well, more of a monthly tradition, but, uh, you know, he, uh, he stated about Iran the other day, link in the description, archived, of course, that we should just blow them off the map. So, I, I guess, nuke Iran. He's like, well, you know, we know where all of their refineries are. We know where all of their military positions are. It'll be a cakewalk. Yeah, let's attack one of uh, Russia's most direct proxies and see what happens. It won't lead to a regional escalation, by the way. If you were to attack Iran, it would lead to a regional war. Iran would immediately mobilize against Israel. The Syrians would join them. The Houthis would be on the march, and everything would implode in the entire region. Saudi Arabia would be attacked by Houthis and probably from the north. The Iranians would draft other manpower from the region. You'd have uh, cross-border attacks with Kurdish militias. Turkey would get involved. Egypt would probably get dragged in. Hell, Israel's threatening to invade Lebanon right now if they don't uh, clear Hezbollah away from the border and stop them from firing rockets and shit at them. Jordan would get involved, certainly. Uh, and so it would be a, a true regional war. In fact, that would be close to a world war considering the number of interested parties. Russia would not just sit down and allow Iran to be a struck. NATO will not just sit down and allow anything to happen to Turkey, uh, and, and nor to Israel. Uh, everyone would get involved. It would be like Megiddo, I suppose. People would de the Christians would definitely be uh, uh, preaching about the end times for every sermon for the foreseeable future. Lindsey Graham's idea is not a practical one. It's not a practical idea because while we could establish air dominance over Iran, and while we could bullseye the energy infrastructure, military targets, ground their drones, etc., while we're capable of doing that, the expense involved, number one, the number of civilian casualties of necessity that would become into existence, number two, the diplomatic destabilization it would cause, number three, and very likely the alienation of the United States and its core sphere from the European zone, so from the EU especially, so it w would be deeply, deeply unhelpful in the end. You might not even win. Iran might just shelter in place and outlast you, and you've spent a trillion dollars bombing things. <clears throat> they just set up decoy stations or something. We did that in World War II, didn't we, with inflatables? We made inflatable tanks and trucks and shit like that, and we put them in a position, uh, and then they would get bombed, and the Nazis would, would waste, you know, thousands of pounds of ammunition on positions that weren't even manned. Did that on a number of occasions. It actually worked very well. This happened in, uh, I believe, in uh, in Serbia back in the day when the U.S. and uh, NATO were uh, intervening there. Uh, I believe they used uh, heating elements in uh, rocks, uh, rock, uh, rocky cliff sides, and people thought that that was a generator, so you know the tanks in there, and so they would bomb them the uh, location, and so for the price of a pot and some some basic fuel, uh, you could get NATO to waste a million dollar missile. It, uh, it definitely was an interesting field tactic. Uh, Lindsey Graham is one of the premier warmongers. He learned very well from his gay mentor, John McCain. And I do think that they had something going on, by the way. Lindsey Graham's never been married. He wears a lot of makeup. He seemed awfully chummy with John McCain. Basically, he would lick his boots. I think that John McCain might have had some dirt on him, um, especially back in that era when being a Republican and being anything other than super straight would have gotten you axed, especially if you're from, you know, the Bible Belt. Lindsey Graham uh, is crazy. Um, he knows that it's not going to happen, by the way, although the elites definitely want it to happen. Um, we know this uh, because supposedly one of the key documents at the center of the uh, Mar-a-Lago case with Trump was actually from Milley, General Milley, now disgraced, by the way, uh, and involved an active plan to attack the Iranians. And Trump told him no. I wonder why they hate Trump so much. This is an yet another neocon that wants to enter into yet another forever war so that the Raytheon stock rises. And so we can do some more world policing and nation building. It's probably just a sidestep into the general region because when it escalates into a regional war, I mean, we're not going to drop troops in Iran. That would be suicidal and insane. But maybe we would put more troops in Syria. Maybe we would double down on our position in Iraq. Maybe we would use it as a justification, as an excuse to expand our reach within that general region, using an attack on Iran as nothing more than an excuse. Now, some Iranian forces have been targeted, uh, typically on the other side of the border. U.S. troops are under fire. C uh, may I ask why they're there then? If it's such a hot zone and you've got hundreds of attacks on U.S. troops over the course of a few short months, 
uh, since 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 Gaza, you know, popped off especially, why are we uh, putting small numbers of troops in harm's way? Either beef it up and make it clear, hey, yeah, we're going to stay in the Middle East for the rest of time until eventually we go Byzantium mode and can't afford it anymore, or withdraw and not antagonize the situation. Right now, there's no imminent risk, particularly, of Israel getting dragged into a regional conflict. That's what Lindsey Graham hates. He wants that regional conflict. I think they genuinely want millions of people to die. It would give Israel a continued justification to occupy Gaza. It would give the U.S. justification to continue to occupy Iraq and send areas in Syria and to expand there. Jordan, perhaps, Egypt, etc. Um, it would give a justification diplomatically to try to rope-a-dope the Turks into more of a Western position, and Egypt too, by the way. Um, it would be an excuse potentially for intervention in Yemen. And so it's not really about Iran. And Lindsey Graham knows this. He, he just likes war. He's just the uh, figurehead that shouts about how we need to bomb somebody. And yeah, it's, it's an ever-changing array of people that we need to bomb. North Korea, the Saddam Hussein and the Bathites, uh, and, and, and it's, uh, the Houthis and now Iran. Uh, although Iran is the one that they warmonger after the most, I will say. You do not need to support the Iranian regime with all of its various human rights violations and fanaticism to understand why it would be a bad idea to attack them. There's no purpose to it unless you wish to trigger a regional war. If you're trying to do that, you're clearly not going to occupy Iran, so you're using your strikes on them as a just, you say, well, if we're going to strike the Iranians harder, because now they're firing back, and that's an act of war, not like when we hit them first, since, it, since we're at war with them, we need more, more tanks and more artillery and more missiles. And so, that, well, that requires more positions. So, hey, Iraqi government, sorry, we're moving back in. Hey, uh, Syrian government, sorry, you know, but, you know, we're expanding this base that we've got, and if you attack it, we're just going to pile drive you, like, a, uh, into the pavement. Uh, hey, Egypt, there's all sorts of attacks going on in the Red Sea. We need a Sinai base. Hey, a uh, Yemen, a Yemeni government uh, remnant, we hope you don't mind if we uh, occupy your country for a while to uh, help you remove the Houthis and minerals and shit in the process, I'm sure. Hey, Saudi Arabia, we also we want bases there, too. We need to get into the Persian Gulf, the Red Sea, uh, Eastern Mediterranean, and then just fortify the shit out of the region until it's just dotted with twice as many U.S. bases. Why do I get a feeling that this is a switcheroo of that type? The, 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 the Iran would just be the, the whipping boy, basically. It's not even the central uh, purpose of it. The Iran being used as an excuse to justify a continued U.S. imperialistic presence there. Again, I am not a fan of East Bloc imperialism, but that doesn't mean that I'm pro-warmongering. And Lindsey Graham is one of the premier warmongers, really, of our time, unfortunately. Uh, he uh, refuses to die or uh, step down. I mean... Uh, I think he's only in his 70s, considering uh, the average age of a congressperson, he's barely in the top half at this point, so unfortunately he'd get three, four more terms. Look at uh, Mitch McConnell. When, when he finally croaks, they'll just mummify him and put an animatronic skeleton inside, and nobody will be able to tell the difference till he, uh, his hands fall off or something. Gerontocracy ain't helping. By the way, hey, uh, Lindsay, do you really want to start a major regional war with Biden in office? thus handing him military uh, wartime president status while giving him full command over <laughs> what the troops are doing? Yeah, you really want people to die. He probably beats off to uh, faces of death. That's about all. Peace out.